Hey guys, uh, this is Crystal with OTP HVAC School. And today I thought we'd talk about if you've already replaced your high limit switch and you're still getting the same error code, open high limit, there's a few different things it could be. Right guys? Well, let's see what else it could be. So unfortunately, not all wiring is as cut and dry as you would think. Uh, and then this, in this instance, you have to actually look at how this is labeled on your legend, which most of you should have. And you can see there's also a pin harness here in which you have to follow where your limit switch wires actually go to. And you're gonna have to follow them down all the way to the board. Once you can follow those two red wires, I've already traced them back and you can see that they are in pin seven and pin one. So you've already replaced your high limit switch. Now some of yours might look different. It could have this rectangular plate back here. I could have a square plate, and there's even some that look like a disc limit. They're round, and you've seen them in the other videos I've talked about before. Uh, even though it looks like a normal disc limit, they can be your high limit switch. Now, the purpose of the high limit switch is that it has a temperature sensor on it with a thermal plate. Uh, it's set usually at a higher temperature, not as high as a rollout switch, but it's meant to open the circuit if it becomes too hot in your furnace. Now, if you've already tried jumping around the high limit with, say, a jumper kind of like this, or if you have even this, or if you've even got some good old gear clips. And when you do that, everything comes on and it's great. But then it does it again. So what now? Well, if your furnace is telling you, and uh, by furnace I mean your control board is blinking, the fault code again for high limit switch, it could be a number of things. I can tell you that the most common issues I've run across with the high limit switch error code is either a bad high limit, which if you've replaced it, you already know, or hopefully the part is good, that it's not the high limit switch. Uh, the other possibility is a bad control board. Uh, misdiagnosis of control boards happen quite often. Um, a lot of times I'll have people come in the store and they'll say, I think it's a bad control board. Uh, we hook it up, we test it, everything works just fine. We're not noticing any obvious marks of burn trails, um, obviously a blown relay, anything like that. Um, it is more than likely, not always, because obviously this is a circuit board, we can't see what all is going on internally. But more often than not, when it's setting off that high limit error code, uh, it's either the high limit is actually bad, or it's going to be low airflow, in which case, again, this is doing its job. Um, normally, it's a good idea to reset the power uh, and go ahead and try to run it again and see if it's throwing the same error code even after all the parts have been replaced, uh, your coils are clean, your filters are changed out. So if all of that happens and this guy is still giving you that code, it's more than likely going to be your control board. But I would do those less expensive options first before just jumping to the control board. The number one issue I run across is the no good, very bad, filthy, dirty evaporator coils. If you're wondering 
right now in this moment what evaporator coils are unless you have a brand new system it is time to clean those my friend if there is a low airflow in that furnace it's going to trip the high limit switch because it's going to get hot in there and this bad boy is doing what it's supposed to be doing also change your filters A lot of people are confused about services every year performed uh, and they do clean your coils but it is not your evaporator coils and uh, you can tell where your evaporator coils are based off of the drain line that's going to come out because this will be your primary drain line from your evaporator coils. Uh, as you can see it's going to be a little tedious to get to those and there is a lot of good videos out there to show you how to remove the panel. Uh, usually you're going to have to remove some screws, maybe some tape, but it is not part of your normal yearly services or your every six month services to actually clean, clean evaporator coils.